Hello boys and girls, uh, so we, we are continuing with our polymer lecture and that is we are dealing with unit 2a of engineering chemistry. Now uh, in this uh, lecture we will be dealing with, uh, uh, we, we, are, we will be continuing with the previous lecture that is uh, conducting polymers. Now in the previous lecture let me revise what I have taught you about uh, conducting polymers. Now the polymers which are able to conduct electricity they are called as conducting polymers. Now majority of the polymers they have uh, they, they are actually insulators but what makes the conducting uh, nature of polymers is that uh, uh, is what has been explained by the band theory now band theory explains uh, the concept of valence band and the conduction band now the molecular orbitals that are having a lower energy level they are called as the valence band and the molecular orbitals that are having higher energy level that they are called as the conduction band now the valence band usually uh, has uh, one or more electrons depending upon the nature of the material. Now in the case of uh, metals what happens that we know that the valence band has one or more valence electrons and uh, uh, the band gap that is the gap between the valence band and the conduction band that also dictates the uh, uh, conducting nature of the materials. Now in the case of metals what happens is that the uh, gap between the, uh, the valence band and the uh, conduction band is minimum or in fact it is it overlaps so what happens the electrons that are placed in the valence band they easily jump to the conduction band and that is what explains the conducting nature of the uh, metals but what happens in the case of uh, insulators is that the band gap is highly significant uh, that means the electrons that are placed in the valence band they require either external energy some external energy uh, for them to jump to the uh, uh, to the conduction band and this explains the insulating properties of the materials. Now uh, in the case of uh, semiconductors is that the band gap is uh, uh, significantly less as compared to that in the insulators and uh, with the help of uh, various mechanisms like uh, the application of heat or light or uh, by a doping we can reduce the, uh, the band gap to a significant level and so that the electrons they can move from the valence band to the conduction band. Now this happens in the case of semiconductors. Now uh, in the case of polymers that we uh, uh, that we see uh, in our daily lives, they are actually insulators. But uh, uh, there are certain uh, polymers, uh, for example, the polymers having uh, 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 conjugation. Now what do you mean by conjugation? That means the phenomenon of uh, the single bond and double bond. Uh, uh, this is called as conjugation. So what happens in the conjugated polymers, the pi electrons, they are more labile and they move across the carbon-carbon polymer chain and this uh, valence electrons uh, they, uh, uh, they are responsible for the conducting properties of the of such polymers. So in today's lecture we will be dealing with uh, classification of conducting polymers with examples and finally the applications of conducting polymers. So conducting polymers are classified into three categories. One, one is intrinsically conducting polymers, second is extrinsically conducting polymers and third is coordination or inorganic conducting polymers. Now under the intrinsically conducting polymers, the polymers having conjugated pi electrons in the backbone. So what is conjugation as I said in the previous lecture uh, is that the uh, presence of single and double bond. Uh, in conjugation that means there must be a series of uh, single and double bonds. Now the pi electrons as compared to the sigma electrons they are more labile and that is responsible for the uh, for the conducting properties. Now the, such polymers like uh, 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 I will be discussing in the uh, in the slides is responsible for the uh, uh, the conducting polymers having conjugated pi electrons in the backbone and such polymers are uh, classified under intrinsically conducting polymers. Now second is the doped conducting polymers. Now the, uh, the doped conducting polymers are of two types. One is P and the N doping and uh, we will be dealing with in more details regarding this. Now uh, the extrinsically conducting polymers are of two types. One is conducting ele element filled polymers and second is the blended conducting polymers. 
So what is intrinsically conducting polymers? As I said just now, the polymers having inherently double or triple bond in conjugation. Now, in, in such polymers, what happens is the pi electrons, they are more labile. So they are responsible for the conducting nature. So such polymers, they exhibit semiconducting properties at room temperature. That means as per the band gap, uh, the valence band and the conduction band, there is a significant amount of band gap between these valence band and the conduction band. But so that means they are uh, even if the uh, pi electrons are housed in the valence band because of the band gap the uh, intrinsically conducting polymers are exhibiting semiconducting properties at room temperature. But what happens uh, under application of heat or light that means you are applying uh, external energy uh, to the electrons that are placed in the valence band and under the application of this external energy the electrons they move from the uh, from the valence band to the conduction band thereby increasing the conductivity of such polymers. Now examples under this category are polyaniline, polyacetylene, polypyrrol and polythiophene. Now you can see that uh, these are the uh, examples of intrinsically conducting polymers. Now these are this is polyacetylene. We have we can see uh, clearly that there is uh, the single and the double bond uh, in uh, conjugation. In polyphenylene, vinylene, again the same thing can be seen here. Polyaniline also we can see the same things. That means the uh, single and the double bond in conjugation. In polypyrrole also we see the same thing. So these are the examples of intrinsically conducting polymers. Now what is doped conducting polymers? So doped conducting, uh, what is doping? Doping is the addition of external agent into the conjugated polymer uh, that can lead to a dramatic increase in the electrical conductivity to values as high as 10 to the power 5 Siemens per centimeter. Now we very well know that copper has an electrical conductivity of 10 to the power 6 Siemens per centimeter. Now in the presence of a dopant, what happens is that the conjugated polymers, they uh, uh, exhibit positive or negative charges. Why? As a result of oxidation or reduction. Now let us see that when such conducting polymers, that means when such polymers having conjugation is exposed to a Lewis acid, what happens is that oxidation occurs. Oxidation means loss of electrons. That means positive charges are developed on the polymer backbone. And such type of doping is called as the P-type doping. So examples of such dopants are iodine, bromine, uh, arsenic fluoride, phosphorus, hexafluoride. Now when conducting polymer or when the polymer having conjugation is exposed to a Lewis base, what happens is that reduction occurs. The reduction is gain of electrons and then negative charges are developed on the polymer backbone. Now this is called as the n-type doping. Now examples of n-type dopants are the uh, ferric chloride. Now the movement of charges as a result of resonance in the presence of an externally applied field gives rise to enhanced conductivity. So this is the concept of uh, how doping can enhance the conductivity of uh, the conjugated polymers. Now let us see how this P and N type uh, can lead to more conductivity. So under the P type, the conducting polymers are exposed to Lewis acid as I told in the previous slide. Oxidation will occur and positive charges are developed on the polymer backbone. So this is the polyacetylene and in the presence of Lewis acid, so the polyacetylene is an intrinsically conducting polymer. In the presence of Lewis acid, so this is a dopant. So what happens is that there is a positive charge developed on the polymer chain. Now see so this is called a speed doped polyacetylene. Now in the end type the conducting polymers are exposed to a Lewis space. So as I said earlier reduction occurs and negative charges are developed on the polymer backbone. So this is again let us see uh, say it is polyacetylene and B represents the poly uh, Lewis space and here negative charge is developed on the polymer backbone. Now then the third type is that the movement of such charges as a result of resonance in the presence of externally applied field gives rise to enhanced conductivity. So this is what we see the uh, polyacetylene in the presence of Lewis acid. Here you can see that in the polymer backbone the positive charge is developed. So that means this is polyacetylene and in the presence of Lewis acid the positive charge is developed here and this positive charge is moving across the polymer chain via the resonance. And this movement of charges in the presence of external field gives rise to enhanced conductivity. 
Now the same thing can, we can see happens in the case of polyaniline when it is in the presence of Lewis acid. Now what is the disadvantage of intrinsically conducting polymers is that uh, such intrinsically conducting polymers is has a, having low conductivities, low process abilities, poor mechanical strength and poor stability. So we come to the concept of extrinsically conducting polymers. Now such in extrinsically conducting polymers they are able to uh, minimize the disadvantages that, that we see uh, during the intrinsically conducting polymers. So polymers whose conductivity is due to the presence of an externally added ingredient in them. So such are called as extrinsically conducting polymers. So they are of two types, conductive element filled polymer. Now conductive elements like carbon black or metals or metal oxides, they are filled into the polymer. That means a solid entity is, is formed and such polymers, they owe their uh, conductivity due to the external agent that is ha that has been introduced into the polymer chain. So thus the conducting nature of carbon black and metal or metal oxides that is responsible for the conducting nature of the pol of such polymers. Now such polymers are low in cost, they have high conductivity, they are light in weight, they are mechanically durable, they are strong and they can be easily processed in different forms and shapes and sizes. Now disadvantages include that, that there is a reduction in tensile strength. Now let us come to the second category under extrinsically conducting polymers. They are blended conducting polymers. Now conventional polymer that is an insulator that means the normal uh, polymer that we see in our day to day lives that is blended with the conducting polymer. Such polymers possess better physical, chemical, electrical and mechanical properties and can easily be processed. Now what are the applications of conducting polymers? Conducting polymers, they are uh, finding major use in electronics like polymeric batteries using polypyrrole and polyaniline as the positive electrode and lithium aluminum alloy as negative electrodes. Electrochromic displays using doped polyaniline, aniline, polypyrrole, polythiophene. Light emitting diodes using conducting polymers exhibit a property called photoluminescence and also microelectronic dev devices. Now conducting polymers are also finding application in biomedical devices. In making bio-based sensors for, for pH, oxygen, sulfur dioxide, ammonia, glucose, etc. Now the conducting polymers can also be used in the production of artificial muscles and drug control release agents. Now the polypyrrole and polyaniline are currently used in the protection of met metals as an anti-corrosive coating. So these are some of the various applications of conducting polymers that we find in our day-to-day -day lives. So this is all about conducting polymers. So uh, conducting polymers are an important class of polymers. I hope you have understood the concept of uh, conducting polymers. Why certain matter? Why majority of the uh, of the polymers are insulators and what? Uh, properties enhance or uh, induce the conductivity of uh, the of such polymers and uh, uh, if you have again uh, any doubts regarding this uh, uh, lecture uh, under conductivity or conductive polymers so you are free to uh, place your doubts in the interactive session that we uh, that we organize every week for you all thank you